story goes like that arjuna was in the indra darbar and there one of the apsara she was having a romantic side towards the arjun but arjun did not respond and arjun requested that he is not here to marry but he is here to get his knowledge sharpened and then that apsara was in very bad mood and she just cursed the arjuna that he will become the inach and then when lord indra came and then he said that arjun is in different league and you cannot curse like this then apsara said that this has to happen because i have said only thing is that i can restrict it to minimum one year and then that one year that was the curse on that day but later on that became a boon when arjuna has to go in exile so then he availed this boon that okay this my one year starts from now because i have to be in hiding so then see sometimes this happens in life also rest of the story what happened thereafter i will tell you at the end of the session this peer review session and some of the young youngsters whenever we talk about peer review they say that i have passed exam conducted by ibbi appointed agency why shall i be peer reviewed <coughs> what is the answer the answer is that you have passed the exam you have yet not yet done the valuation report and valuation report is not a science this is an art therefore you need to be peer reviewed you need to be reviewed by the person who has already done some of the reports that is the reason why this peer review is there for you and then what are the objectives of the peer review some of the new entrants they fail to understand that why why this peer review just on the pattern of the famed south indian song why collaborate so it is something like this so what are the objectives of the peer review the objectives of the peer review are so that you can be taken towards the next level because in next session what we are going to do we are going to see the great opportunity wasted in the form of the real valuation reports and then we are going to see what a world class report shall be there we will see both type of reports in subsequent session after this peer review short session so that each of us understand where we want to be either at the lowest ladder or at the top of the ladder in the profession so that is in our hands so then to protect the collective image as i told you at the beginning subha rao ji that one bad report will spread like a jungle fire yes and 100 good reports will remain the silent and nobody will talk about those reports correct so then that is the reason so that our collective image image can be protected that is the reason because we have lot of lobbies who are working against the registered valuer one of the lobbies of the lobby of the merchant bankers because for them this is big money exercise and this is the exercise which connects them regularly even before and after ipo and then there is another lobby which is registered with the wealth tax income tax department they are also working and then a few other professionals they are also working towards that so then we have to be careful who is authorized to carry peer out review so then peer review you may have a question whether this peer review is taken by ibbi or rvo then you are not fully correct you are partially correct because advises rvo to do rvos are the peer review report of the rvos are addressed on annual basis by ibbi suppose there are 14 rvos so then what will happen that they have to have annual session with the ibbi where ibbi will ask all the rvos to send their peer review report and then what will happen that in the transition the ibbi will have a session with all the rvos and then on the basis of the reports peer review reports submitted by the rvos then ibbi will issue the suitable instructions and by this time we i remember very fondly that ibbi constituted one committee the report of the committee came which added certain headings rajeshwar ji five headings you did that session and and then prior to that we were having 12 headings in the valuation report and after that ibbi consulting group which was constituted by ibbi then five more headings have been added and now we have 17 mandatory report headings in the valuation report if your report is not having the 17 mandatory headings, that means that you are failing to be at average you are below average and where can i see valuation reports valuation reports you can see at every place for example bombay stock exchange of india or nsc national stock exchange of india in case of listed companies you can see the valuation reports there so that you can improvise your valuation then ministry of corporate of 
taxpayers whenever any compliance is to be done the valuation reports are submitted and valuation reports are submitted that means for closely held companies just pay 100 rupees and download the valuation book and if you don't want to pay 100 rupees then on my valuation bank you get the valuation reports free of cost and today only we are going to upload 25 more reports here and now international reports is the target and in next one year we will have 20 into 5 20 nations at least 5 reports of each nation and 100 reports of the other nations will also be uploaded on myvaluationbank.com so that the new entrants in the profession, they can freely and can download the reports from here. By this time, reports are primarily related to SFA valuers only because the land and building and plant and machinery valuers, they are not coming forward to share their even five years old report. I have asked many of them, but by this time, none of them could be convinced that they shall share their report. Why people fear to share their report? Because they don't have the confidence in their report. That if this will come in public domain, then uh, there may be a session by Bangalore Valuer Association <laughs> and they may criticize. So therefore, they don't share with the fear of BVA. <laughs> yeah. Sir, whatever reports uploaded on my valuation, we have masked the client details. We can mask or we don't have to. See, once that anything is in public domain. It need not be. If anything is in public domain, then no masking required. No, but masking is required only when it is in public domain, when it is not in public domain. But then the question is, supposing when you are undertaking a valuation assignment, there is a duty of confidentiality to the, to the entity that is giving you information. Yes. Now when that, so either in my initial engagement letter or something, I have to put some condition, which say that this data might be put in public domain for, uh, if this particular engagement is selected for peer review, then I might have to share this information with my peer reviewer. And subsequently, if he puts that output somewhere for training purpose or something, then your data that you're giving me in confidentiality might become public. And the client has to agree to that. It is not like this. See, confidentiality. What is the level of the confidentiality and where it ends? Confidentiality ends where the regulator enters. If stock exchange says that you have to place the valuation report on stock exchange, that day confidentiality ends and you have complied with the agreement. See, in that case, the company that is getting the valuation and then is aware upfront that this is all the audience to which this report is going to be shown, right? Now, supposing I am putting up the valuation report of a non-public, let's say private company, okay? That company might not be expecting that their report will ultimately be in the public domain. So the onus to inform that entity upfront before accepting the engagement or at, at somewhere at a point of it is not so. otherwise, uh, he might say that you, there is a breach of confidentiality from yourself. You will not tell me before taking the engagement. It, that it is, is not so. There is a reason. See, there is a reason that client has to upload this document on Ministry of Corporate Affairs. Ministry of Corporate Affairs is fine, but then, not BBA. Then Ministry right. of Corporate Affairs is a public That's okay. platform. That means anybody can download from there. That's okay. So then no, everybody, not from BDA, no. not from why not? No, no, unless I tell him that in due course of, or any other entity, wherever, see, who all will, suppose I'm doing a valuation engagement for yes, you, right? yes. and you have appointed me. Yes. In my engagement, and I'll say, okay, boss, as a, this is a regulation that I'm subjected to, and I'll have to share your valuation report finally with, let's say, the Ministry of Corporate Affairs. You're aware of it. Okay. Now, there is a third entity called BVA. I have not told you about it. You're not aware of it. As a valuer, I am not going to upload this on the MCA portal. Number one thing. Company will upload. Company will upload. Some other professional will certify. Even if I certify, I am certifying that in some other capacity. And company is uploading it. Then where is the question of violation from the side of the valuer? No, no, no. I am talking about the other one. Whether you put it or I put it, the fact is that you as a valuation client are aware that ultimately your report is going to be put on the MCA portal. Yes, okay. Whether it goes through you, go through me. But it is something that you are prepared for. Okay. But you as a client are not prepared for me putting your valuation report on, let us say, BBS side. So without informing you, MCA you're aware of, BBS side you're not aware of. So like, tomorrow you can come and question. Like, when we are giving it to private limited companies, say that to valuation bank or GDI or some other person. Correct. Better to delete okay. company name and give it, no? Yes. So, you are going to delete company no, name. Once it's public, public data, it doesn't, doesn't matter where you share. See, no, but, uh, See, that is con if he is the client, it is up to him whether it matters or not. I can't take a call on his behalf whether it matters or not. Right. Even like Zoba Corner also you can. Yeah, confidential. Forget all of those. Better. See, I, because I can't comment on it before Zoba Corp to MCA agreement and him to MCA agreement have been seen. 
ओके आई एम अबाउट दिस एग्रीमेंट इज देयर विथ मी इन द फॉर्म ऑफ एंगेजमेंट इट इज सर्टेन टर्म्स एंड कंडीशन राइट इफ इन दोस टर्म्स एंड कंडीशंस आई एम नॉट मेकिंग इट क्लियर टू हिम दैट एज अ रिजल्ट ऑफ इट व्हाटएवर इज द रिपोर्ट दैट आई बी गिविंग इट टू हिम विल आल्सो बी पुट अप इट सोर्स एबीसी ओके देन दैट वुड बी अ काइंड ऑफ ब्रीच ऑफ कॉन्फिडेंशियलिटी फॉर आवर टू पॉइंट कॉन्फिडेंशियलिटी इज अबाउट इंफॉर्मेशन सेकंड इज अबाउट टू पॉइंट इसके व्हाट आर यू शेयर माइंड विद द वेंडर इज कॉन्फिडेंशियल फॉरएवर Right. Report. Yes, I have to one to file. Given to the company, one to file PS3. This is a public document. Anybody can access. Right. Anybody can access. I will access. This is then. Uh, oh, yeah. I, I don't think you're getting it. See, a public document is at a specific source. Yes, sir. MCA file document is a public document. The whole world knows it. Right. Okay. I am talking about a document that is in the custody of BVA. Sir, one more that thing. That cannot be given by valuer. Okay. That, that, that cannot be, be given by valuer, right? Yeah. Yeah. That cannot be given by valuer. Sir, BVA can take. You can take all the information from MCA and I'll upload it in BVA. Yes. You are not doing it, so you don't have responsibility. Yes. Sir, please, please. So the point yes. is, in due course of the valuation engagement, he has shared with me maybe twenty-five right. documents, right? All the twenty-five documents are internal confidential to him. Those twenty-five working papers are not already been uploaded on MCA, right? I have uploaded a valuation, correct? Now the point is when he is appointing me, and I am writing on paper certain terms and conditions. Okay, I am saying that I will treat this information with confidentiality, no less, correct? If I don't make it apparent to him at that stage that for education purposes or for training yeah, purposes or regulatory purposes something, I will put it on MCA plus I will put it on A B C D E possible. Yeah, if that clause, that yeah. paragraph is important. Yeah, that if that paragraph, paragraph is absent, absent, that should be masked. Yeah. Be told that it is masked. When it is not going to a public domain, it should be masked. Yeah. When it is going to the public domain and it is known to known to everybody, yeah. For this purpose only, yeah. it need not be yeah. done because it anyway it is going to the public domain. Yeah. Okay. So once it is anything only for private. Circulation, as you told, all the working papers need not be shared. It's only your your yeah, document document document. Asset. Correct. Correct. You need not share it. Yeah. Only if you call for some inquiry within eight years, you should produce it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Otherwise, you need not. Yeah. yeah. But the output information. This is the company. This is the valuation. Those steps and all it needs is yours. So invested in the yeah. valuation report can be masked. That critical yeah. items can be masked. Yes. So just a sample. This is the industry. This is how we. Yeah, because this happens in certain other, in, for example, in certain influence security audit things that we pick up. Yeah, yeah. That thing we need to tell him up front. Yeah, we can. And see, as of now, only one type of valuation reports have perennial confidentiality. Those are the reports under IBC. IBC reports are not required to be uploaded on any public forum as of now. Therefore, they are away from the public domain. And then, specifically, the IBBI regulation put onus on three parties. Party number one, valuer. Party number two, insolvency professional. Party number three, whosoever is privy to that valuation report. That means the whole of the COC committee members. Onus is on all three, and all three have to sign an affidavit that they will not share this document. Right. And that particular regulation is written in a way, though this was the mistake. Take of the regulator that this document valuation report has become a confidential document for forever. There is a reason that even this confidentiality has no exit clause. Reason being, this confidentiality document. Otherwise, what shall happen that once that valuation report is there, after that the liquidation has happened or CIRP has happened, after that it becomes irrelevant. Then it shall come. In Public domain. Otherwise, how the new entrants will learn the art? That means everyone has to start from zero because there is not even a single valuation report in public domain as far as IBC is concerned. That means every new entrant, whatever may be the age, has to start from zero because nobody can share. But this is only and only related to the valuation reports which are carried out under the IBC. All other reports, either MCA or the stock exchange, have to invariably go over there. And then the best practices, the practices which are being adopted by the merchant bankers, that they will share even their working. I will showcase you the one of the report which my office has identified, and they said that now we want to from the next report we want to elevate to this. Level because you have to do the constant learning, and we will see certain reports also where the confidentiality, so much confidentiality has been maintained that this is basically the murder of the profession. 
if you go for full confidentiality then profession will not survive because your reports are going across the world also as i was telling you that uh, we will be uploading the five reports of the other nations also and by next year you will have 100 international reports on this myvaluationbank.com why so that we can elevate our co-professionals to the level of the world class so that if they do the valuation for the European company, I got one opportunity where one of the client was from Korea and he set up one company here and then he wanted to acquire 100% of the equity and he said that you add something in your fees, but we would like you to travel to Korea and justify your valuation report. If you do not know what the Koreans like, how you will do it, whatever you do, they may not like your report and then your all efforts will go in vain that means that how the learning will happen in absence of the actual reports and here valuer is not violating anything valuer has done his report he has handed over the report to the company and valuer has not given the report to bva bva has taken it from the public domain if bva has taken it from the public domain how the valuer is concerned valuer has done his duty and he has till date he has not revealed anything and in our report we have made a departure that we mention that once the confidentiality period is over this report can be used for academic purpose by me also we we put that frankly speaking we put and only out of the reports done till now only one client said that kindly change this clause and we highlight that kindly read it that for academic purpose i can use it once the confidentiality period is over that means once that has gone into public domain then as a valuer i can also use it <clears throat> so that we write even in the proposal as he was asking yes. where shall i write so then i will say boss even in the proposal maintain it that once the confidentiality period is over i can use it or rather i we use that company as well as valuer can use it for the purpose of academic excellence we put it like this so that it is win win model Correct. not that i will misuse it you cannot but you can also and i can so this is the way out the question which you were asking that how to make it in my report so that if tomorrow i give my report to the bva i do not violate so that is the way that once the confidentiality is over so then i will not i but both of us can use anyway let us move to the point. yes any moment in the document is public is available yes my confidence automatically goes but his question is very valid how to make it inbuilt Correct. in the proposal and also in engagement letter so we will showcase you we will send you the sample yes. how that sentence is drafted so that it will solve your and to and the query yeah. how does rvo do it what is the model operandi rvos have most of the rvos are working on two three four staffs only even the ici rvo is having only the six staff there then staff members are usually not qualified as a valuer so then how do they do the initially what happened that wherever they could get any merchant banker who ultimately did this registered valuation course and qualified as a registered valuer so initially every rvo engaged them for the purpose of peer review and later on when this period because now four five years have gone so now what has happened now Now that the person like me who were not merchant banker, even they are being invited for the peer review of the reports. And this peer review of report, where from your report is being compared, your report is being compared with the company's valuers and valuation rules 2017 plus the IBBI directions which are issued from time to time. That means as a valuer, we need to, to comply with. Companies' valuer and valuation rules. That means, whenever in doubt, read the company's valuer and valuation rules once again. And then that particular section, whenever in doubt, whenever you feel that the fees which you are quoting, then at least maintain the fees which is minimum to be paid as a penalty. <laughs> that is the benchmark, and that benchmark is mentioned in section two hundred forty-seven, and that benchmark is mentioned over there. So, whenever in doubt, what fees I shall quote? Do remember read the section two forty-seven again, so that so. that you to know that if something goes wrong at least this much i have to pay even if my pocket is empty i shall not pay from other pocket yes say please have your Sorry. yes we will take 5 minutes break and uh, okay. start okay yeah. just hi the city is the chairman <laughs> there is special say we were talking how how does rvo do it because rvos are having very limited staff yeah to the south 
RVO, then how they are doing it? So then how they are doing it? They are doing it through the qualified valuers. The valuers who have passed into first, second, third batch, now they have become the peer reviewer. Prior to that, merchant bankers were acting as the peer reviewer. Only the merchant bankers who have passed this registered valuer profession exam also. So that was happening. Valuation report is confidential document. Do I need to share with IBBI and RVO? That is the only thing where the valuer has a control. But there it is mentioned in the valuation rules that RVO and IBBI can seek the report and sharing the report with the IBBI or RVO on as a valuer, that is not the violation of the confidentiality clause because they are the regulator and they can ask for this report. And peer review is taken once or at regular interval? This may be the question. Peer review is taken not at once, but at regular interval. And at regular interval, this peer review is happening. Initially, how this was happening, that they will not ask the valuation reports from all the valuers, but they will ask by the randomly chosen valuers. Suppose 100 valuers are there. They will ask from the 10 that, okay, send two of your reports. Then those two of reports, that means 20 reports will come to me as a peer reviewer. And then I have to see what is the flaw in these valuation reports. And then I have to send the reports commenting on each valuation report. And then this in, in, initial report will be shared by the RVO with the person who is registered as the registered valuer. This is best practices. So that that valuer can improve from that level. Yes. Provide peer reviewer kind of thing uh, Ini initially it was not initially there was no guideline because see the rvos are not having the qualified well then who will prepare the guideline so this is the peer responsibility yes peer like reviewers yeah he, he he reviewed. Reviewed. the report has been followed by section 247 yes 247 <laughs> valuation rules Oops. then ibbi regulator instructions and these things we used to take care of whenever the peer as a peer reviewer we were asked to do the to carry out the peer review where can i see peer reviewer comments are these available in public domain answer is yes today we will see the peer reviewer comments and how they have improved in case of one particular rv where what are the general deficiencies which have been mentioned in peer review reports? We will see those general deficiencies also right now here on the screen so that each of us understand and we can see, we can benchmark our own reports and we can improve from there. How the peer review reports reaches to IBBI? There is a mechanism. That mechanism is that on YOY basis, there is a committee and in that committee, each RVO, whatever work they have done on the basis of this, they have to share that report with the IBBI and there will be a collective meeting where this will be seen that how the registered valuers associated with various RVOs are performing and the RVOs which are having the more deficiencies, they will be pulled up by the IBBI. Sir, here I, I will give an example. Yes. In our insolvency case. Yes. Like we appointed two plant and missionary valuers. Yes. They have given the difference is more, more than 20%. Yes. Then we appointed third valuer. He is also given like difference, 40% difference. Oh. Now the three valuers got notice from the IBBA why this uh, difference is there, this much difference. Yeah. And it has been reviewed. And they ask a lot of questions like questionnaire, like how did you value on what basis, whether you have taken market value or realizable value. It is started already, IBBA started. Yes. What if my report is not up to the mark? Yes. I was subject to a peer review by my RV. Yeah. Uh, I insisted that an NDA be signed by the peer reviewer as well as the RV. So the peer reviewer agreed to sign yeah. it. Yeah. They signed it. But the RVO head did not agree for a... Huh. They shall not. <laughs> so then I said that uh, I can only provide you the report in physical copy. Yeah. And only to the peer review. You can only share the findings of the report. Yeah. Is that a good practice or am I bound to share my report? You are you? bound to share. Okay. And this is the one of the conditions. Yeah, the public document that is whatever is the findings of the peer. Don't worry for that. Once once the your report has been acted upon, ultimately this is public document. That is fine. Basis of it is meant for improvements or will it actually be, you know, will the value be correct? No, it so will not. This will not. This will not because this. <laughs> but there is a funny that says uh, giving report. 
Yeah. This is not because that interaction is not with the peer reviewer. Your interaction point is your RVO. And as a valuer, you are interacting only with the RVO. And now RVO has stopped the practice of sharing the peer reviewer name. I think now they have stopped this practice of initially they shared initially i remember that in first year they just whatever was mentioned for the report by the peer reviewer they shared it with the valuer and because that peer reviewer was also the new valuer so there was the tussle by who are you then there was a question and then later on now rvos have stopped sharing the detail of the peer reviewer it is not that they will actually call us and seek information no it is not like. but the question is sir who will appoint the peer reviewer can i as a valuer select ceo for my peer review or present are they appoint presently ceos are appointing the engaging the peer reviewer initially this was complimentary exercise no rvo is appointing rvos are appointing ceo of the rvo they are appointing the peer reviewer initially this was complimentary exercise reason being that rvos were not having much money even now out of the 14 15 now 16 rvos 15 street 16 out of the 16 rvos only two are in profits yes. rest of the rvos are still in losses what are the other icai here That IOV, IOV, IOV. Yeah. So yeah. So then what places the RBO pick up the uh, valuers so who are eligible for peer review? It is random. It is like random. Random. But even if it is random, do they ask for certain parameters yeah. and based on those parameters okay. they say? No, she is asking for that which valuers report to be peer review. She is asking that. She is not asking for the peer okay. reviewer. She is asking for the valuer. Okay. It is not like this. Okay. Initially, it was kindly send your two reports, any of your two reports, for the purpose of peer review. Initially, it was like this. Later on, then they because. Initially, the valuer were very less, and work was also very less in market. Now, as the work has increased, so then what has happened? Now they have gone for the random things that okay, randomly select the value. Maybe that tomorrow, then this methodology will also change Criteria. so that ha, so that so that it becomes okay. Okay, one shall not be targeted because I fear that with my name starts with A. So then everywhere, then they will put that. Okay, from the beginning, take five. Like this, the R shall also get this opportunity. Opportunity to get reviewed because R is common with them. Rajeshwar and review. <laughs> What if my report is not up to the mark below the desired standard? Presently, only the CEO at the most CEO of your RVO will call you. And he will say, "Sir, kindly improve. There are many things in your report which can be improved." So he will be very humble while talking to you, and he will say that I am sending you the report. Kindly go through carefully and improve your report. Well, I was telling you, and then what happened that when the this exile, the second exile, basically this was the third exile for the Pandavas. And you know what was the age of Yudhishthir at the time of when the this Mahabharat war broke out? He was sixty nine. Huh? Yes, and that was the reason why even the grandsons. You this stuff fifty nine sixty nine and he was eldest eldest and that was the reason that even their grandsons they were also in the war and some of them lost even before the war start and then let us let me share one report which is basically the peer review report first I am sharing the better one no sir yeah, that is <laughs> no I think first then we can we can analyze here and yes share the screen. Yes, so we will start this from A C S C R D team that we have to make up and make. Initially, the peer review report was without letterhead, and this letterhead is lateral development. In initial year, it was it used to be without letterhead because. CEOs were also learning the many things and see finding and observation of the committee of experts. Then what happened for the first year there was only one peer reviewer. Later on now the board of the peer reviewer that means three peer reviewer now they are engaging so that it is not ki bhai agar Ajay Gar ki report hai to then Rajesh Shor will say this is good no no deficiency. So that's the reason why this committee of experts now has come and then after so reviewing they have different practices different practices new. Our viewers are. Not appointing three and see yes now not necessary not necessary and yeah see objectives actually the thing is that IBBI will ask for the peer review report so therefore what is what has to happen 
happen that ultimately the RVOs have to go for peer review report. Otherwise, if they will say they we have not done any peer review, then their license can be revoked. That's the reason. Yeah. Then objectives. Now these objectives are also mentioned over there. Common mistakes and issues to understand common mistakes and issues in the report. Findings and see now the findings, the good findings there. First of all, findings and observations, background information of the asset being valued are mentioned in all the reports evaluated. Means the initial efforts of the peer review have won the fruits and most of the valuers now mentioning this background information. Purpose of valuation mentioned in, mentioned in valuation reports. Scope of work found in all reports under review. Valuation basis. Valuation basis not found to be mentioned in some of the reports. Premise of the value are observed to be missing in some reports. Intended users and limitations in all reports reviewed and this was mentioned. Then intended users reviewed. Date of appointment mentioned. Yes. Um, Evaluation basis, they have, have said not mentioned Mention in some yes. reports, right. but valuation basis is always uh, fair by It is not like so, it can be it can be it can be liquidation value also. It can be yes. This is mentioned here. See, see two forty seven. 247 is only the act and act is further fine-tuned by the rules. Rules are further fine-tuned by the regulations. Regulations are further fine-tuned by the circulars. Circulars are further fine-tuned yes. by the clarifications and clarifications are further fine-tuned by removal of difficulties. Yes. Yes. To give fair value on B is... Uh, it is as per as discretionary whether he wants to give equitable value, market value, whatever. Yes, your choice. Is it? Yes, it's your choice. But it was actually once upon a time my doubt. Yes. That two forty seven says I have to give fair value. So can I give any other value? Yes, why not? But I need references for that. Liquidation value. No, no, see. IBBI cases, liquidation value. Now, talk about the SEBI cases. In SEBI, regulations are there and this is mentioned even in IVS. That wherever regulator is there, then whatever regulator has said, that shall prevail. So that shall prevail means that has to prevail. So that way, you have to skip that thing and then you have to take care of the, our, the savvy regulation. If my purpose is provincial then Always, it if it is small company, don't make them scapegoat. Advise them, go for right issue. <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't be greedy. Don't be greedy. Close the business, but you are winning the heart of the client. And he will come back to you with the bigger package. Always do it. Sad do not... The company is sad. In case the investor is new, we always suggest them to go for preferential. But don't go. Don't go. Go for right issue. Because in right issue, you have all the four options. Don't do it. Give it to Subaravzi. <laughs> Put it in dustbin, partially take it and partially don't take it or apply for more. All the options are there in right issue. What for you need the preferential issue for private limited companies and that also small companies. But actually if a new investor is coming, you take it, they don't want to give it as a nominal value. They wanted to the value it more. And so then yeah, if all the state investors are there, then there will be a value of amount, but the next are the amount. Sir, even in right issue also, no, our users are asking reports. She is talking about FEMA compliance. Yes. He no, okay. yes, upon the value. What is the price here? Yes. But it is not Yes. But the is It is also some are asking. So, fair value in case of a going for liquidation. Sale value is a fair value. So, going for it of shape, yes. That is a fair value. It offers to be a commercial basis. Fair value is through broad definition. And don't you know this? If we take that as valuation basis, in case of the preferential value, it is a question. Equitable value, I tell the difference between fair value and equitable value. Equitable value is between the parties. Only. You are a seller, I am a buyer, and you agree to sell at this rate. I also agree to this rate, uh, to sell, uh, buy at this rate. It's not fair. That is equitable value. It's not correct. It's not fair. That is equitable value. Correct. So, can I give such equitable value as a uh, value? Yes, yes, yes. So, the only thing is that I have to use my scope. I have come across that. That's the reason why I'm telling. I see. I shall tell you that. 
ब्यूटी ऑफ दिस दैट दिस इज दॉलेस्ट चैप्टर ऑफ द कंपनीज एक्ट सिंगल सेक्शन चैप्टर and check chapter has empowered the central government and with that empowerment central government only has issued the rules that is not that uh, central government has used that power which is mentioned in the section central government has further elaborated there and then central government said that now ibbi is appointed and regulator and he can further elaborate so then nobody is violating you cannot say that i will just comply with this section because powers are being drawn from that section only and see the other thing any other expert involved in the evaluation not specifically mentioned in fury if no expert is involved then we need to mention that no expert is involved over there. sir suppose i take any one my fellow professional uh, yes. help i can mention it. expert expert like my assistant that is not asking for my of my assistant ki jisne show case kiya khoobsurat banaya report was not asking for that any other expert fellow valuer yes fellow valuer yes his report you should have expect fellow valuer yes you shall you have to mention it. you must yeah. mention that plant and machinery valuation have been arrived by so and so and that has been used in this report If you take only best practices from fellow valuers, I don't think you can mention. Yeah, somebody is giving some, like you are doing uh, some valuation, but there is an intangible. Intangible is you are not expert in that. So in that case, you have to mention that I have to take. I have taken IPR valuation from IPR expert because I am not expert in it. So you have to name that expert or just mention that you use an expert. Ah, uh, hello. Hi. Hello. Yes. Samsung. If Jashin is speaking. The report. Actually, okay. please speak. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So actually, I wanted to under understand the modus operandi of peer review. So I have a RV. So they recently connect, uh, no, contacted me about that. You know, sharing my report with them. Uh, for peer review. So I have shared my peer review report. Uh, sorry, I shared my evaluation report to them. So now, what is the modus operandi of this peer review? Modus operandi is that I V B I. Peer reviews, RVOs, RVOs. Yeah. Peer review the reports of the registered valuers. For this purpose, because RVO officials and CEO are not qualified as registered valuers, therefore they engage the experts. Yeah. And the bigger RVOs engage more than one expert, and then they will take the report from you and will forward this report to the experts. And then expert will make his comments. He will forward the comments to the RVO, and RVO will approach you back. as a registered valuer and you will interact only with the rbo and you most of the time now you do not know who is the expert which have been engaged by the rbo this is the modus operandi in brief okay so, so uh, am i uh, obliged to share my working uh, so, so or uh, my valuation uh, sharing my valuation report would be suffi sufficient valuation report would be suffice okay okay and what is the what is the uh, you know uh, uh, rights given to them like they can go into the work they have a right to get into the working papers uh, you they know can uh, they can seek because can. See, you have the responsibility in law to maintain those working papers for a period of 8 years okay and the purpose why you are being asked to maintain the papers is that they can seek your papers okay not only at the time of peer review but for 8 years any regulator can seek okay. once once this peer review gets complete so I, will i get any communication or will i get any yes you will get the comments okay particularly in reference to your report okay uh, and 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 on top of it will i get any certificate like in in icci we get a certificate that no. you have peer review certified are viewers uh, are viewers are too young for that this will okay. happen say 2 3 years down the line okay uh, in in addition to this uh, just have a small question since yes. i am a chartered accountant and a registered valuer both i am practicing on on both the uh friend so there is a valuation bill right which was under proposal i know that this question is little out of context but i wanted to understand from yes, your yes. perspective uh, yes. so so uh, so like how how soon it will come like uh, you can't hold two cops yeah presently it is allowed and presently the registered valuer profession has only one side of the profession mm. see full time employment has not yet been mentioned in the rules itself mm. only one side of the profession that is practicing side of the profession has emerged mm. 
but very soon we will see even employment side emerging for this profession because now some of the companies particularly infrastructure investment trust and real estate investment trust mm. because both the companies which are listed they are now being asked for the valuation at regular basis mm. regular basis is periodic after every 6 months and event based whenever they buy any property or they sell any property at that time again they have to go for the valuation Mm. so therefore now what is happening that now they are feeling the heat and they are approaching the regulator that kindly develop the regular full time employment side of this profession and your question that this dual practice at least will continue for next 5 years and not only dual practice but now you are allowed to practice on multiple platforms you can practice as insolvency professional you can practice as valuer you can practice as chartered accountant and then one new practice is going to start from 2023 that will be social auditor and that will also be allowed initially that yes you can do it with your other practices thank you harshil ji thank you thank thank you sir thank you thank you very much the patient if the valuation report is shared is they can ask but still they can ask they can ask for them but should be voluntary voluntarily also give the management representation letter and the engagement letter because engagement letter defines the scope of function Function. If I will, I will share not carrying that document. But we have developed a practice where we share even an excerpt B and C with the client, so that that is my disaster management cell. Eight years, na? Eight years. Suppose this crashes out, then where I stand as a valuer. So we have developed a best practice. Rajeshwar ji also share that practice with me. What we do that all an excerpt B and an excerpt C, we will share as a, uh, a spiral binded separate booklet. valuation report is separately spiral binded and then annexers are separately binded and then we share the pdf of the b and c annexer and we share the hard copy also and we have made each of our client as our disaster management cell so that if data does not remain with me at least that is with my client what are the annexers b and c what working papers working balance sheets of 3 years are sir kahan tak sambhal ke rakhunga then there is a challenge so then my client shall keep it that yes that also methodically uh, tabulated and then all the annexers are there and then annexer c that is engagement letter and then your proposal then is request for proposal because tomorrow someone says i have not requested and he has used it and this is violation of professional code of conduct so where is that first beginning we are request for proposal shall happen from your client that means that email which happens that is the genesis of any assignment and if i do not preserve that then rajeshwar ji suppose one find a i do not obey him then he will say okay ab main tumhe dekhta hu so then he will file complaint against me solicitation when, basically ha when any friend becomes the enemy then he is more dangerous <laughs> so then you have to be careful so therefore rfp request for proposal even if it is single line email that is where from yeah that seek the mail where is the proof yes scope no yes the inquiry is specifically right in case some chartered accountant lawyer is contacting mail right i received proposal to their consultant so and so yes i'll write specifically in name yes and see this is 2020 peer review where 17 points were there why 17 points because 12 points mentioned in valuation rules and 5 points mentioned in the ibbi committee report therefore these 17 points 17 bullet points happened in 2020 and you will see the highlighted portions that you will find that except one rather all all the 17 points the deficiencies were there yes 20 20 valuation reports do not make reference to outstanding liabilities is it an ibc See. because ibc we actually don't mention outstanding liability it is an asset based uh, this is basically the summary observation so what is pending liability outstanding liability maybe your uh, current liabilities right and all thank you Borrowing. every contingent liabilities that not no 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 it's not contingent contingent if it is there yeah. no no see Sorry. this is outstanding this makes that valuation reports do not make reference to outstanding liabilities actually ibc report valuation report we are not supposed to so it is separate no, na but this is summary requirements sir see sir see. this is the format which was in 2020 so why shall we waste our time in 2022 for this <laughs> we have already crossed we have already crossed that river this is just for the reference that what what peer review is doing to us that yes. peer review is 
helping us to improvise further and to take our profession to the next level. That is the purpose to showcase it. Sir, one question. Yes. Are there any types of peer review report? For example, audit report is a qualified report, is a clean report and there is you know, It is not. Uh, is because peer report? reviewer is not auditor. He is just reviewing okay, and suggesting. Is there any type C? For example, if I can even type in peer review. Okay, but my peer review could happen, could contain these 17 gaps, right? So how do you distinguish between the classes of somebody who's passed his peer review cleanly and yes. somebody who's passed his peer review uh, has actually failed? Is there any failed peer review failed kind of a report? <laughs> It's very confidential, but basically these are the uh, observations, uh, these are the deviations which we have found. That's all. So, so there any deviation? I've been peer reviewed. I've done 10 years. In all my 10 years, I've done nothing. My status is okay. I've been peer reviewed. Is it okay? See, sure, it is gone. Correct? I don't know. How are you distinguishing between a peer, between a valuer who has, who has, let's say, presently, on a sample basis, three? Presently, no such system. Peer review is just for improving your quality of the report. That's, That's all. It. It's a feedback to you and in a soft form. No harsh feedback yes. is taken. Okay. Okay. Atmos, as you said, the RBO CEO might call up and say, sir, please improve it. No. That's all. Yes. That's all that Yes, soft. No. This is all evolving. So. Because ultimately, for your work, they are not getting paid. <laughs> Next time, they will like IBPA is starting IPs. Next, I will give you a couple. My star, the points one percent up to per. IPS are you, sir? Yes. For one more. So, peer review will be a free effort, actually. From the reviewer yes, side. Work. Yes. The second RVO which has engaged me as a peer reviewer, they say that. We don't have funds. I said, okay, no issue. <laughs> I have the time. <laughs> Sir, already you are mentoring startups. Now you have to mentor yes, exactly. Each of you can become the startup on the mentor portal. Particularly, I will say this person, you all three, then you senior age group sitting over there. Give something back to the, to the nation. And we can give back as I have decided that, okay, in my rest of the lifetime, can I give 2,000 entrepreneurs to my nation? 2,000 successful entrepreneurs. Being short in height and then lean and thin, I cannot go to the border. <laughs> <laughs> what can I do for my nation? I'm a finished person. I can at least nurture. Can I? On a startup portal, you don't get anything. But the satisfaction which you get when someone from uh, the interior of the India will talk to you and he will select you as a mentor and would like to continue to talk to you about his difficulties, about his questions as a startup entrepreneur, then you feel that, yes, you are contributing to the society. So, anyway, let us back. No problem, sir. So you can yeah. go ahead on this initiative. Is it DIPP website? Yes, this is DIPP. DIPP. Uh, now just the name has changed. We'll put it in the group also. Now the name has changed, so and now initiative. DIPP name has changed to DPIIT. DPIIT. Yes, and then this DPIIT has separate dedicated site. Startup India, and you just depute your youngest trainee <laughs> that he or she shall empanel you as a startup mentor, and then you will fall in love with that your activity, and you will love to share your experience, your expertise, but do it without expecting any fees. <laughs> you are not supposed to charge any fees, and startup portal or DPIIT will not give you anything. That is, if you want to give back to the society, give back. Therefore, I have identified that the persons in my age bracket, 10 years younger to me or 10 years older to me, they can do this yeoman service. Well, welcome back, and now analysis of steel, Tata Steel merger and amalgamation valuation report. On 22nd of September, this merger and amalgamation has started. And as a valuer, I will keenly be watching this merger. For the reasons, I will share the reasons with you. A small story about Abhimanyu and Chakravyu. And you know that in Mahabharat war... Yeah. Last story you told... Uh, Yunich and Archana. Uh, what is the difference with this? I did connect that. Part. Sunday only. No relevance. <laughs> and the relevance is that sometimes the you have the blessing in disguise. You may feel that I have been cursed, but you never know when you will use that curse in your lifetime. Curse in disguise. For example, when I was, for example, when I was growing up, I used as a 17 year, 16 years youngster, everybody's idol is Bhagat Singh. I, I will also go to the border and will kill two Pakistanis. Then I was told that I can't do it because my height is less. 
<laughs> so then I have to have my intellectual height so that so that I can contribute to my society. <laughs> now I feel that yes, that short height is also a boon, not a curse. <laughs> And see, Abhimanyu and Chakravyu in that Mahabharat war, from both the sides, everyone died. And Pandavas were already 60 plus 60. All Pandavas were already 60 plus. Only person who survived was the son of Abhimanyu. Means perhaps we all are the lineage of Parikshit. And his father knew how to enter into the Chakravyu but did not know how to exit. And when I was traveling today with Chandra Shekharji, he kept me on the roadside for half an hour. <laughs> so this is story is dedicated to Chandra Shekharji. That we all... <laughs> then, then what happened? That perhaps we all in our lifetime know how to enter into any practice but we don't know what is the right time to exit and maybe that even at the age of 60 we are into signing the form pikatis battis and something like this that means we have failed to understand the art of exit and we are in the same chakra view which we entered at the age of 22 well said sir well said so this is something like this <laughs> are bhai kindly disclose name and status of companies merging with tata steel limited how many companies are merging seven companies merging with tata steel limited september 22 notification tata steel long products listed tin plate listed tata metallic listed trf listed and then two unlisted companies and one unlisted wholly owned subsidiary is is value very high fi and it tata steel celebrity company world's top five and then how many valuers are involved because seven companies are there where can i see valuation reports three questions you can see on my valuation bank also <laughs> number one question is valuer very high fi entity anjanji valuer is individual not even rv entity no <laughs> you may be surprised Price to note that valuers are two individual registered valuers. One registered valuer Vikram Jain has signed five valuation reports. Whereas one valuation report is signed by registered valuer Rashmi Shah. And we also have three Rashmis here. So then one report has been signed by the female registered valuer. The seventh entity is well wholly owned subsidiary. Because it is wholly owned subsidiary, therefore valuation report is not required. Where can you see the reports? You can see on the my valuation bank also. Are these valuation reports very complicated? Are these very bulky reports? Are these valuation reports very attractive and lot of statistics? And see, no, not at all. What is not at all? Valuation reports very complicated. Simplest report. Simplest report till date I have seen. Valuation reports available in public domain. Yes, five valuation reports signed by Vikram Jain runs from four to seven pages. Whereas one valuation report signed by Rashmi Shahaji runs to 15 pages. That's it. Sir, one question. Four to seven pages can we cover all the requirements of IBBI. Must be an executive summary. Sir. That question I will leave to you. After sir, must yes. be executive summary they have shared. Sir. Actual no. report. That you will, I will we'll showcase see, you the document. I will showcase. Pages only will be four to seven pages. I will showcase the document right, to you. Right. So that we can understand collectively that why I say that I will be keenly watching this, that if this valuation report goes through, then why I am making so much Himalayan efforts? <laughs> why TV are such? This so is because Tata Steel has got a very strong legal team. Yes. yes. So much and listed. Different for no, no, we are not going to file a case. First case. First case. We are not listed companies. The equitable value is justification. Then. These are plain vanilla reports. These are plain vanilla reports without any picture, without any graph and with minimum table. Minimalist approach has been adopted by two registered valuers. Minimalist is also one of the approach. Anjanji must be aware about that. Where, because this now has come even in the case of web portals where you go for the minimalist approach and you showcase the limited information on your web port. <clears throat> Why so many valuation reports for single merger? Because I told you six reports, five reports signed by Vikran Jainji, one report signed by Rashmi Sahaji. So then there may be a question in the mind that by this time we have understood that one merger means one report, equitable value. Then why so many reports? Whether one jumbo report was possible, this may be one of the question. Seven companies merging and only six valuation report. Where is the seventh? And why so? And where is the air? Because ultimately those seven companies are merging with 
the earth company. So if it is company wise, then where is the earth report? Let us see the questions. Once approved, this will set new trend. Actually, shares are not getting allotted to all transferer companies. That should be the reason why valuation reports are less. In one case, what is happening in one particular company that that company, the money is being returned to the shareholders, remaining shareholders, because all these are subsidiary to Tata Steel. And in that particular company, Tata Steel is holding more than 95% of the equity and rest 5% is with the outsiders. And those outsiders are also perhaps Tata entities separate. So then what is happening that they are refunding their money, Buyback of refunding the money. Sir, so in merger, why refund is coming, sir? Not Reduction of share. So then refund is happening in that particular case. Shares are not getting allotted. See, 95% equity already with Tata Steel. That means against 95%, there will be no allotment. Now, yeah. question is of remaining 5% and remaining 5% has agreed that their money is refunded, then they don't have anything. So then that way, this is also one of the benchmark that yes, this is also possible when you are merging the company. It is not necessary me to take you on board as a shareholder of transfer company. I can pay back your money. And I can get your company. These people are inventing new roads. We'll Provision, uh, yes. See Single valuation report is usually preferred. This is one of the exceptional case where multiple valuation reports are there. I remember that in 2001, I did my first merger that was for six companies. At that time, high courts used to be there. And we prepared the single valuation report. And this practice is being adopted in almost all the cases because seventh company is wholly owned subsidiary. Therefore, no requirement of issuance of fresh shares. 100% shares will get expunged. Hence, six valuation reports for seven transfer companies. What is the date of disclosure? What is date of valuation? What is date of valuation report? Registered valuer must have taken a lot of time. Whether now this last question, Tata Steel, so much land, so many plant and machinery, so many buildings, whether land and building and plant and machinery valuers were involved because this question invariably, wherever three valuers are talking, this question will come up that whether for this SFA valuation, you need their hand holding or not. So if they got a land bank, which is the non-productive purpose with all land and holding for business, then the excess unused land. Uh, land and business, in many cases, not equal to the land and business captured as a part of the... Now see, September 22, 2022, that is the date, date of, which says the date of disclosure, means when this report was uploaded in the public domain, public domain, 22nd September. And because now stock exchange says earlier it was within 24 hours, now it has been reduced to after this 22nd September, now the time period has been reduced to 12 hours, means whenever board meeting happens, the documents to be disclosed within 12 hours. That means document must be kept ready in advance. 12 hours, maybe midnight. <laughs> so then penalty. So then be careful because 12 working hours are not mentioned. 12 hours are mentioned. And what is the date of valuation? Now see date of valuation. There, 30th June. 30th June because quarterly results. Therefore, 30th June 2022 has been taken as date of valuation. Means the data of 30th June has been used. And then... Yeah, yes. What is the date of valuation report? September 22? 22. 22. 22. Yes. Hello. Hello. Yes, yes, yes. Arjunji, please. Yeah, so, sir, actually, I have questions since uh, okay. with respect to the valuation date in case of merger, right? In yes. case of merger, what happens that there is a scheme and there is an appointed date and effective date mentioned in the scheme, right? Yes. And we... Uh, say for example, we are uh, the appointed date is first April 2020, yes. and uh, we are doing a valuation today, and we de we are determining a sales swap ratio for the merger, right? Yes. So, so, so generally, the, the the valuation date should not be the appointed date. Yes, you are right. So, but but I have seen that in many cases of merger, right? We generally don't mention the date, and and in, in case the date is mentioned, and the the, the date of uh you know swap ratio is the date of valuation, which is the current date not the appointed date. You are right. See here what is what has happened that 30th June was the cutoff date. Any data, any revenue, any other things after 30th June have not been taken off. That means that you can presume that appointed date is 30th June because these are listed companies mainly and data for unlisted companies may not be a challenge. So therefore, what has happened that 30th June is the cutoff date in all the valuation reports and these reports have been signed on September 22 and the date of valuation report is also September 22 because the disclosure to the savvy to be made within 24 hours. So therefore, even when we are the valuer, we have to be on tender hooks and we have to maintain the things like that. 
and we have to mention the date on the, our valuation report so that it is not in the violation of the SEBI guideline. That is the reason. That should be the reason for it. Okay, but but actually, even in most of the cases where you know there is a uh, the, uh, division of or subdivision of an unit or undertaking. So in many cases, uh, what happens that uh, for the purpose of determining a share swap ratio, the values are considering the current date, not the date when the the, the, the appointed date or the, the appointed date or the they determine as per the scheme. Best practice is that you must consider the date of appointed date even for the purpose of swap ratio. Only situation is that where your shareholders have changed during that period, only then you shall go for the swap ratio on the current date, that means on the date of signing of the valuation report. And see, in case of listed company, situation is very different. In case of listed company, what will happen that till the listing or till the merger orders are there and after merger order also the cutoff date will be announced by the transferee entity and the shareholders who are holding the shares on the cutoff date the shares will be allotted to them in case of listed companies merger so that is neither the date of valuation report nor the appointed date nor anything else whosoever is holding the shares on cutoff date he will get the shares in exchange. Well, then registered valuer Vikrant Jain done five valuation reports in 24 days. Date of engagement letter is 29th August for four valuation reports and 13th September for one valuation. And Rashmi Shahaji did that report in 14 days, one valuation report. The engagement letter is dated 8th September. VJ completed five valuation reports in 24 days and Rashmi Shahaji completed one valuation report in 14 days. Valuation reports do not mention involvement of any other expert. Valuation report Oh, yes. Oh, yes. It could be before 22nd September also. No. Listed companies and disclosure is to be made within 24 hours. Therefore, the valuer has to put the date of the board meeting only because this is price sensitive information. This cannot be kept in hidden by the company. Not the September 22nd. Because the board meeting happened on September 22nd and the documents were uploaded on 22nd September only and the reports are also carrying the same date. Listed companies. You cannot take liberty ki bhai mein ek mein purani date mein de otherwise this will be very taxing to your client company. So the report cannot be 20th September. Cannot be. Not possible. Sir, this is what is so price sensitive information. Important about that means the directors are holding the price sensitive information and they have violated the guideline, the regulation of the SEBI. Price sensitive information should be revealed. That is the onus on the listed company. Yes, yes, because it is handed over. I do not know. Yeah, yes. So there will be always categorized department will have price and sensitive information and corporate financing, which is closely dealing with this consolidation and finance financial finalization, they'll also borrow from the trading for almost one month before this kind of activity inside the trading regulations. So definitely you can share the draft with them. But again, what Sar is telling RD company and board, the moment it comes to the meeting, we think always it has to be disclosed. So it may be placed on the table. Yes. Final. 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 Any company can have some sales purchases, etc. etc. or partners. It is a running process. And yes, but in the case also, I will come to know if my business is increasing and the costs are not uh, reaching me or not increasing proportionately. And I know that I want to uh, say my profit will be increased. Really so I am holding the prices to yes. what they call them. Yes. So this is still gray area. Price sensitive information is still gray area. One way I just yes. to yes. extend this uh, discussion. Uh, when uh, this, this is put in the board meeting of uh, 30, uh, 22nd September, September, it means director for also not having any information about this report. Yes. They have just seen the yes, report yes. and taken the decision. Yes. Yes. So what? Price sensitive information that driver traveling with the director <laughs> and and pit regulation is there and yes yes i should also adapt every inside regulation policy in my form including my website i also need to uh, comply with those regulations yes 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 even the team uh, consultants also have to do it if i am working for it my team is supposed to follow pit regulations yes. and the consequences are very dire 25 crores <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
Whether Excel sheets are annexed to the reports or referred in the report, whether SEBI formula has been used for listed companies, what formula has been used for unlisted companies? These may be the questions in your mind. So now let us see answers to these questions. First one is whether Excel sheets are annexed to the report or referred. No reference. Plain vanilla reports has not annexed any working sheet in five reports and RV Rashmi Shahji has annexed one very sleek working sheet. And now second question, whether SEBI formula has been used for listed company? Yes and no both. In absence of working papers, concrete answer not possible. For listed entities, equal weightage has been assigned to market price method and comparable companies method. This is something very extraordinary thing because SEBI regulation clearly says that in case of listed company, you have to go with the weighted volume, yeah. volume weighted yeah. average. Yes. price. So then right. where from the CCM method got the equal weightage 50% and how this was used. So this is very interesting in this report. Right. In, these report. in case of unlisted entities, asset approach has been ignored. DCF and CCM methods has been used assigning equal weightage. Now here my, my suggestion to BVA members that this is the time to improve the word DCF and use the word that is correct word that is DFCF. DCF is wrong word. DFCF is right word. And and I will advise each one of you to use the word in your reports, DFCF, not the DCM, because DCF is nothing. Yes, without free, if cash flow is not free, it has no sense. And that's the reason that you have to adjust the increase or decrease in fixed assets and increase and decrease in working capital so that you know what is the free cash flow. If you are not adjusting that increase or decrease, in fixed assets and increase and decrease in working capital, then your report is flawed. What is speed? DCF was count is applied on free cash flow. Yeah, that that is this is only suggestion. This is this is only suggestion. It is up to you to do it best practices. I am sharing the best practices with you. Yes. No one knows. Any, any academic textbooks? Academic textbooks follow the professionals with the time lag of 20 years. Text, anything will enter into textbook, academic textbook, 20 years down the line, what we do today. So if we start doing DFCF, then they will understand the difference between DCF and DFCF. But and somebody might say DFCF or DFCFF. This, that cannot be, no? because how you will spell it out? As a concept, discount is applied only on free cash flow. So but it is not like this. You will see, if you will see 90 reports, then in 80 reports, you will find that increase or decrease in fixed asset or increase in decrease in working capital has not been used. That's a mistake. That's that's a that's definitely a mistake in computation. That's a differently. No, no, mistake in computation, mistake in understanding. The moment you start using DFCF, your mind will stack up. That where is my free cash flow? Makes sense. Yeah, from that point of view, it makes sense at least. Yes. And your team, you can rebuke your team that where is free cash flow? Remember, uh, someone must have worked. Hello. So, uh, uh, since we are discussing yeah. about Tata Steel yes, MD valuation. Yes. yes, we are discussing about Tata Steel MD valuation report. So, uh, recently I was referring the G Sony merger values. So I think we, no, we, we have been doing a session on that and you are invited to do the session on that if you wish. <laughs> no, no, I would like to understand because I'm not, okay. I, I am still because learning. That is next on card and I was just going to request to Rajeshwarji because I have made three in a row that next month he will be doing that webinar on G Sony merger report because that is yeah. one of the wonderful report yes, yes correct 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 yes 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 thank you thank you actually in the same way i have the same question that they have considered the well signing or signing of date as the valuation date and uh, the, the scheme was uh proposed to be effective from the uh, other date yeah, thank, thank you yeah. okay. what is speed everything happened in 24 days so let us see but remember someone must have worked for pretty long period to attain this speed and most likely rv vj and rv rashmi shah are having full-fledged dedicated team of rvs Hence, they were able to complete gigantic assignment in less than four weeks. Heads off to them. Heads off to them from Bangalore Valuer Association <laughs> for doing this work. By the way, and then Anjanji wants to ask, by the way, how did you get access to these valuation reports? I was told that valuation report is confidential document. Then I got the access once these were made the public documents. Once these are public documents, then I... I can discuss, I can deliberate, and I deliberate even about the actions of the Prime Minister. So this is only valuation report. Once that news is in public, we discuss the actions of the Prime Minister and we criticize. If we can criticize Prime Minister action, why not this valuation report? Now see, valuation reports are confidential.
till until they come in public domain once in public domain in open registry they loses confidentiality clause and to be very frank i have taken these from bscindia.com and mca portal if bsc india got the wrong reports then i have got the wrong reports if bsc india got partial reports then i have got partial reports if bsc india got only executive summary then i also have executive summary if that report is incomplete then this report which i am showcasing to you is incomplete and i will showcase you the reports very soon so then what is the final learning lesson from today's session valuation report is not a rocket science even big company assignments can be closed in limited time corporate valuations may not necessarily need help of other registered valuer no other expert is involved not even land and building and plant and machinery though as far as tata steel is concerned lot of unused land is there if this case goes through then this is the lesson that no need to engage anyone else just am brahmo asmi and as a abhimanyu and chakravyu i my suggestion to chandrashekhar ji and all others that kindly exit from these small assignments chandrashekhar ji that thing which we were discussing in the when you were driving and i was just your sarthi <laughs> because i was telling you the way <laughs> you were come there and then left then right so then today i was your charioteer and you were there i was conductor and you were driver <laughs> so then in simplest form because to enjoy the life we must exit from the nitty gritties and we shall not lose our vigor and energy in the low paid assignments as we grow in the profession so that is with this story the abhimanyu and chakravyu that is the lesson which we have learned together and because we started little late therefore we will close at time so that we get at least 50% marks for bvl <laughs> and now let us see some of the reports the reports i would like to share the reports related to this merger first of all the report is of a listed entity where listed entity getting merged with the listed entity out of the six reports this is one of the report yes young value acr acr yes. so then then anjan ji anjan ji he is recently he is younger than you then yeah <laughs> So so some people don't, don't take it. Yeah. See, see, they don't have it. They have not taken. Yeah. 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 And the, that is, there is an option. So many people who are seniors. That means that the thing which Rajeshwar Ji pointed out that few of us do not go for FCA. That should be the reason because in 2018 he was eligible. Eligible three years. That means in 2018 he was having at least three years post qualification experience. Yes. Three years. Three years. Five years. Three 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 years. now see report intelligently mentions that this is recommendation of share exchange ratio and then everything is related to the valuation down the line engagement letter dated august 29 and then he has been engaged in this engagement letter for carrying out the share exchange ratio between tcil and tcsl that means when three companies merging when i am doing it for subarav ji i am not disclosing the strength of her company and when i am merging with her i am not disclosing the strength of the subarav ji then equitable value concept is lost over here whenever you are having the individual report and see whether any valuation summary is mentioned over there no that means this is not executive summary very first page of the report is what they have now see the first heading is both the questions that there is a very poor support the business is startups so he may have given two reports also one is to that company and another company same report yeah scope and purpose of this report purpose is pursuant to a scheme of amalgamation and see it is mentioned that is contemplating an amalgamation now see the language that is very appropriate language they the valuer cannot say that is is proposing an amalgamation that means price sensitive information already disclosed to him and he was privy to that price sensitive information which was not disclosed to the shareholders therefore contemplating word has been used so this this word do remember this word whenever you are doing any assignment in relation to the listed entities contemplating yes I you know. cannot disclose the action it always like this it is always like and as a consideration for amalgamation equity shareholders would be issued equity shares or shares of tsl share exchange ratio 
So for this report refers to number of equity shares of 1 rupee which would be issued to the shareholders of PCIL of the face value of 10. Now see source of information which is mentioned there. Now see the limited source of information which have been used by him. A, B, C, D, E, F. Draft scheme of amalgamation, audited financial statements of companies for the past three financial years. So this is, the P is very stereotype. See report says that this net, that asset approach has not been used. So this is, this I feel a stereotype that we we will come to the reason why one report in this case did not happen. We will discuss. Hypothetically, we will discuss and see discussion with the management, other relevant details of companies such as their history, their promoters, past, present and other relevant information and data including information in public domain, such other information and explanations as we required and which we have been provided by the management. Date of valuation. If DCF has been used anywhere, for example, right? Can he get away by not making any explicit reference to any forecast at all? Yeah, future uh, something has been It's changed. very ambiguous. He is not yes, yes. explicit reference to any forecast. Probably. In case of listed companies, you cannot use DFCF. Because it is market uh, price uh, rated average. If you are making the five-year projections, then first of all, you need to share those projections with the stock exchange. Therefore, you don't have the projections in case of listed companies. And whenever no, doing the valuation, of listed companies abandon the DFCF. Oh, okay, uh, that's good information. But what happens is, as part of your uh, investors meet, okay, what happens is, and uh, and also a company like Tata Steel, no, they will give their forecasts and all these analysts put out their expected share prices and also buy sale recommendations also. Okay, yes. If you go to the uh, analyst report, you'll yes. find five year, ten year projections, something based on which they'll say we believe that there is a fair value of this. Analysis. See, only information which is wrong is that. The future guidance is at maximum for next two quarters, not for not more than that. Even in case of Infosys and TCS, the future guidance is for next two quarters and projections are never shared in the that an investor meet or analyst meet or something. Never shared. We have number of investor analyst meet documents there and none of the document gives you the insight for next five times. None of the documents. Because even in the investor meet, they can only share the information which is not price sensitive from the point of view of the listing agreement. Max, we can get to meet after. They'll say we have received this much of orders and our order yes. has been increased. Yes. This is the maximum information. Yes, yes. You know, no, no. Yes. Then uh, only the uh, price can be taken or how to do the volume weighted, volume weighted average price that is mentioned in SEBI regulation. Volume weighted average price to be taken and two methods are given over there. One method is for six weeks, another method is for six months. And if these are frequently traded shares, the methodology is different. Friend, if these are frequently traded share, methodology is different. But whenever doing any valuation assignment for the listed company, remember, do not insist on DFCF because they cannot, even if they have, because they have not shared with the stock exchange, they cannot share DFCF with, that means five years financial projections, they cannot share with it. If they have not shared with it. Then reject reject income method. Okay, reject income. Yes. Abandon. Don't hold on. I am not making a broad sweeping statement. It is not applicable. What? See, you are a listed company. I am a valuer, right? If you have given me forecast for let's say five years or ten years, the requirement on you is that the same information you have to share with other investors also before sharing with you. Or, or along with you. Or along with you. Yeah. Why before? Along. Correct. Before. Before. No, before. as soon as you before. before sharing with any other person, stock agent has to be informed, then you share with it. Okay. Before. Because so 12 share. hours from uh, the time when okay. these projections were placed in the board meeting. Oh. Okay. Huh. These projections need to be shared as on date within 12 within hours 12 hours. Okay. with so, the stock so, exchange. So, so. 
So, so this is subject, there's an assumption that if it is not shared with the CBA or stock exchange within 12 hours, then you cannot share it with me. Therefore, income approach is not applicable. But that onus responsibility rests with the management. If, if they are willing to make that, say, for example, a company might feel that, okay, income approach is most suitable for me. I'm a listed company. The constraint is if you share it with me within 12 hours, you share it with the stock exchange also. So from that thing. point of view, we cannot rule out that income approach cannot be applied. Not, not like that. Clarify. say in case some regulatory describes some methodology, you cannot use other methods. Clearly says for any purpose, they have prescribed valuation methodology. How you have to regulate it? Even if you wish, you cannot. Okay, okay. That was the regulate 64 of CBI CDR. That is where it says you have to use sir, that has been changed now. It's not six. Yes. It is 90 trading days of volume weighted yes. average. Now it is 90 days and trading days. Oh, yeah. There is another approach. And, and this is 64A is this is, this is in relation to IC. But here in case of this merger, SAST, substantial acquisition of shares and, and takeover regulation that is applicable and LODR is applicable. In this case, these two regulations are applicable. So my question is, so there are, are you saying that there are certain CBI regulations which will mm -hmm. prevent mm -hmm. income method from being yes. applied for listed companies? Yes, yes, sir. For listed company, you, you cannot. cannot. You cannot. For 64 a that is an that's exception. exception. Infrequently no, traded. Hey, hold on, hold on. Sorry. When some, Even then, sir, when you shall not. You will be putting that company into trouble. So for billing buyers and sellers yeah. established that. So when they start as IPOs when they made, or is it different for IPOs? So IPOs, it is a There is no balance for IPOs. So that was in and all. Presently, regulation is not required. It is not required in IPOs. No valuation is going public. It is price discovery. The mechanism is price discovery. The and, and this price discovery mechanism is known as road show. Road show. Yes. <laughs> and none of the show happens on road. In the article, but after the moment it is put in possession of Big Five here, quarter quarter you have to give the word deviation by deviation. That's okay. You should justify what we give, what is the achievement to the use gap. There are several situations to come for analysis. Because of that, yes, I was saying, say, by rule, no protection. Because, as you say, even there is a provision is there, it's not a so easy way to project and also submit the deviation report. Because when you are making the projections, you have, you would have made some assumptions against the assumptions. You have Actually, to identify what is the actual reality and then certain and deeper. And there was only one exception, sir. This was during COVID. For stressed companies, they allowed income approach for a very short period. Of, okay. After the, there was a sunset date. For it once after that sunset date, now again 164 isn't because whatever is available in public domain that market wise, it overrides everything, all the assumptions, everything. When it is crystal clear before you, why you make assumptions? That is the contention. Now, see, valuation is done as of 22nd September using the financial statements as on 30th June. And background, see what all is mentioned in the background. Only this is the background which has been used for Tata Steel, dedicated for this one paragraph and then share all day. That is largest. <laughs> that is true. Uh, that is largest. Can be verified no, in terms of uh, tens per annum capacity and all. That is verifiable. Whatever the public point making, public question. Same for tin plate. Another paragraph, six line paragraph for tin plate, dedicated and then followed by the shareholding, promoter and public. That's it. But that they have to disclose where it have. And now exclusions. My report is subject to scope limitations detailed in engagement letter. As such, the report is to be read. No investigation of companies claim. To title of assets has been made for the purpose of this valuation. Their claim to such rights has been assumed to be valid. And then my work does not constitute anything. Valuation of this nature involves consideration of various factors, including those impacted by prevailing stock market trends. Course of valuation, I was provided with both written and verbal information. I have evaluated the information provided to me by the client through broad inquiry, analysis, review, but have not carried my report. And then all other things, copy, paste, register. 
registered valuer yeah. nor its manager good, good employees parents. agents any of them and after this the second is approach to valuation engagement and now see we approach to valuation engagement in connection with this exercise we have adopted the following procedure major fault one is ibbi we are not here for fault finding we are here to learn correct okay. yeah but and second is mr it should be mentioned management this is these are the so yeah. these are the learnings yeah the date of mrl everything should be made these are Eight the learnings anjan ji yes these are the learnings this is given to you only for only yes this is given to you delight डिलॉइट ने वो फेयरनेस कर दिया फेयरनेस ओपिनियन इज इन पब्लिक डोमेन तो देव जस्ट गॉट समी टू साइन वैल्यूशन आई डोंट नो This is this person is from Deloitte only. No, they made it. They have a this report cannot be of Deloitte report. Selection of internationally accepted valuation methodology after deliberation, which is not possible. Arriving of valuation of shares for proposed transaction, and here he has mentioned he has arrived for valuation of share. Now valuation methodology that market approach, market price, and comparable companies multiple. two methods income approach discounted cash flow and cost approach rajeshwar ji net asset value method but actually sir idea is there it is investment faster in production yes and yes you cannot use that as discussed below continue yes, in case of listed company only market price that is the methodology prescribed by sir and see now market price method explained and he has mentioned that in the present case equity share of tsl tscil are listed the share price observed on nse for an appropriate prior period to the valuation date that is 12 september 2022 has been considered for determining the valuation of tsl and tcil under the market price method and now see what has happened under comparable company under this method value of equity share of a company is arrived by it by using multiples derived from valuations of comparable companies as manifest through stock market valuation of listed company this valuation is based on principle that market valuation is taking place being informed by between informed buyers and informed seller i have considered this method for valuing both the companies comparable company sir apne mein ye matlab hai ki beta matlab company hai abhi dekh it's for sebi regulation we are not supposed to no you can you are not because these are frequently traded shares Yeah. Now see discounted cash flow. I have not considered DCF for the present valuation as the long term financial projections have not been made okay. available, being price sensitivity information. NAV in case of NAV, the value is determined by dividing the net assets by the number of shares and historical cost. Since the shares are valued on going concern basis and there are no intentions to dispose of the assets of the company, I have considered it appropriate not to consider this method. So then, what has happened? That he has considered the two methods. One is, and both the methods are market price. And then this is interesting to note that he has used market price, and then he has used comparable companies market multiple. So what is the difference? Sir, first is one. No, no, both the companies because both, both are listed. Both are listed. Comparable companies market. Best in our JSW. Steel Authority. Steel Authority. General Steel. Then Anjan ji, go back and read the SEBI regulation again. This is the learning, so that whenever you require, you can also use this CCM. <laughs> We have a precedence. That paragraph can be yes. You can quote this. And if someone <laughs> and if someone <laughs> operates in NCLT, you can say that Tata Steel used it. Why I am being denied? <laughs> yes, done already in the public domain on the same day. Twenty second, yes, Deloitte. Deloitte, no, clean, clean peer review. Fairness opinion. Fairness. Since the shares, fairness opinion. No, see, this is the learning for all of us that we will go back to our work stations and we will see what SEBI regulation says. Each and every one, read out that this method of right, but applicable to this case, so we are. इंटरनेशनल वैल्यूशन मैं बट रेगुलेशन नॉट मैं एंड नाउ सी दिस इज now recommendation on fair exchange ratio now value per share has been used asset approach then mp then ccm and then mp and ccm given 50 50% weightage and then the valuation has been arrived 107.0 and it is very 
and it is very interesting to note same and similar is, same mama and it is very interesting to note that all six reports do not have this 107 with tsl all reports are 22nd but this 107 kindly note this 107 in this report because tata steel remains same company correct in all six reports correct but this 107 is not constant in all six reports he himself is giving that the value is different different there are reference even ots computer that we will see to it now we are now not plain vanilla report i am not saying no i am not saying we are just see we are we are just doing the learning and we have to take our lessons from here and then and then i will i will showcase one best report which we must see here in today's session so this is but uh, see it's end of the page uh, over you will in this page and this is forwarding yes that see later. see do not use this word use the word that we are learning <laughs> we are learning that we should not learn miss this yeah. this session is not for fault finding this session is for the learning how you should not be <laughs> and one more learning i have received is just in case let us presume that this is covering letter of one more report let us presume so never make that mistake of page 7 of 7 at least you make page 7 of 10 20 30 40 ah, because same. that could be misused na no? i would have assumed that it is an just a covering letter but then if i don't refer my full detailed report as an annexure or i don't mention that as a number of pages i have to mention you have to upload it in, in case of listed entities you cannot withhold any no the what company does is out of my control what i give to companies mention that it is an annexure mention what is the number of pages you know form a full part of my report as a seven page report assuming that this is a covering letter of my no, report no. So if not, there is more than seven, has to disclose it somewhere. No, very explicitly, very explicitly. Yeah. In fact, in one of the cases, I saw covering letter. Then I spoke to the valuer. Then he said, "Madam, my detailed report was already given. This is just an executive summary. Same thing." Closely held company. No, it was something listed company. When I called him out of curiosity, he said, "Madam, what you are saying is just an executive summary. I have a detailed. But then unless and until I make an effort to disclose it, I could be misled. Who is called the valuer? Friendly. Oh no, not him. A similar case, a big valuation. In fact, that page had was actually three page report. So I called the valuer. He was little offended, but then I asked him, sir, is this the whole or is it a summary? A similar thing. He presumed it to be a summary. So now this is the report for the closely held company. We will just glance through. Yeah, here he is not saying that. Commendation. Yes. Unlisted. Only one person. And here we will glance through the report. The determination of favor. Again, it is a share exchange ratio, no? Supposed to be. Subject he has not put proper. See. Or he has not. Or he is not recommended. See, this is the company where the money is being paid to the remaining shareholders. So there is no exchange ratio. No exchange ratio. That is the reason. Okay. Therefore, I have skipped the four and I have opened it. And that is perhaps the reason because one of the company's shareholders were ex exiting. Therefore, the Uh, jumbo report was not there and separate reports were prepared yeah. because methodology was different some of the companies were unlisted some of the companies were listed and then other thing that one of the company shareholders were not getting the share that will be yeah, paid in cash refund cash 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 study study case yes that is why sir has taken it and this is our today's discussion <laughs> and now see valuation is done on 30th june using financial data 30th june here he has aired actually aired yes actually aired actually here date of valuation he has aired he has 22nd september perhaps uh, as a valuer never make this miss anyway now uh, have next learning next learning is tata steel and now indian steel and wire product which is unlisted company and now see here 95% shares hold by tata steel and others are holding 4.99% and these 4.99% shareholders have been, this is proposed that their money will be returned then do the mca inspection and then you will know who all are there list of shareholder we upload equity valuation of yes there is a reason that money is to be refunded 
नो एक्सचेंज रेशो यस एंड सी इनकम अप्रोच मार्केट अप्रोच बिकॉज इट इज अनलिस्टेड कंपनी देर फॉर ही हेज मैं कंपेरेबल कंपनी ओनली एंड ही हेज नॉट मैं मार्केट प्राइस मैथड फॉर लिस्टेड कंपनी ही सपोज टू टेक दस सेवी रेगुलेशन लास्ट सेंटेंस He has used only comparable company. Two Why? Comparable, comparable, comparable and DCF two. Why NAV is not considered uh, because it is a good such. Yes, and then fair equity value. So here fair equity value now see fifty fifty percent weightage for DCF and CCM and you have four twenty six. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so this is valuation report. This is six six page report. Calculations. This is of अमेंडमेंट As far as SEBI is concerned, and see this report runs to thirty-three pages, and this is beautifully drafted report where the valuer has gone for the PPT form. Yeah, latest because when you get the opportunity, you must make your document which becomes a talking document, and then again we have take females taking the lead. <laughs> and see this is the forwarding letter where she acknowledges the support extended by otl team also you didn't <laughs> yeah is and then ca then the index ca ca report number is also very nicely yes captured so she has some sequence your your own your own internal internal your office like you have invoice number report number. Like that. Yes. 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 Yes.
Actually, actually, Anjan is not here, but he shared with me that when he was peer reviewed, his peer reviewer has specifically mentioned that he was supposed to maintain one uh, serial number, unique number for he internally of each of his reports. And if if you are doing backdated reports, then do not do it. <laughs> Okay. Anything which is internally generated. How you make? Now see report summary. The executive summary comes over there and then scope, background, source of information, other headings. Yes, sorry. Yes. You're saying backdated. No? This lady, what she would have done is she has reserved up to 1000 for backdated reports. <laughs> 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 Sir. Report summarized. Now see the summary is the sleek summary. Actually, ICAI, FAQ, they have requested, uh, they have suggested all the members to have this summary, executive summary, report summary, ICAI. Business activity, purpose of valuation, valuation date, this premise. Format also category. Broadly, the have valuation have conclusion. What has to what should 14 be 14 rupees next? 54 pesa per share. That's a good, good so I really follow this. Therefore, I am showing it. Yes, <laughs> follow this. Based on discussions with the management of OTL, relevant date mentioned here, valuation date has been considered this. And now see the beautiful headings on every slide. Oh, she can't be keeping it. PPT yeah, she has converted to PDF. Background of the company. <laughs> <laughs> Very pleasing to This should be. Yeah, At least we have a background now of the planet. Yes. She has analyzed the board. This skills. is and see now the background of the company beautifully captured. So this purpose I see. One sixty six A. The regulation was mentioned. This sample of report background is like a good one of the good reports. best practices. Background continues. Okay. Infrequently. Yes, infrequently. Infrequently. 166A for that. Infrequently. 166 is for frequently. Yes, 166 is for frequently. 6A is infrequent. Infrequent. Now, sources of information. Now, see details of contingent liabilities as on present date, which one has to consider. Then annual reports of the company for the year ended. Then she has separately mentioned all the years. Then she has mentioned trading history of trading history data of equity share as available in public domain of relevant legal provisions. Now legal provisions are mentioned over there. Preferential issue. Then 164 has mentioned for determining the minimum floor price, then 64.2, then 64.4. So all regulations reproduce relevant. Then legal provisions captured. 166A comes into picture. And then she has mentioned what is the difference between frequently traded and infrequently traded. So here comes that 90 and 10 days, which was being talked about by Anjanji. That 90 and 10 trading days, volume weighted average price of the script preceding the relevant date, whichever is higher. Or any stricter provisions in the articles of association of the issuer company. Valuation report from a registered independent valuer. And then 166A says 90 and 10 trading days volume weighted average. Any stricter valuation report from registered independent valuer. Separate meeting of committee of independent director is required to mandatory held. Such committee to provide a reasoned recommendation along with their comments on all aspects of preferential issuance including pricing. Here what happens? That this committee of independent directors and the board meeting are, con are convened on the same day so that the compliance default is not there. And see, finishing in two minutes. Huh? See now how to use the eye catching pictures because our mind cannot read. Then methodology, then here identification of assets and liabilities, non financial assets, identity, identify market and market participants, apply valuation technique and calculate fair value. And see how all the methods have been mentioned and then methods have been selected as per the company's requirement. Valuation premise comes from India. Indian valuation standards. No, but these are not Indian valuation standards. Yeah. Indian valuations. What is this Indian valuation? There is no term for Indian valuation standard per se. They cannot use it. ICI valuation standards. ICI. ICI valuation standards. Hello. Hello. Yes, Mr. Yeah, so actually I have a question. In most of the valuation where there is a private placement, right? Uh, so uh, there is a private placement by company uh, investor into a company. We do a valuation for that, right? And we use the valuation based as the fair value. So is it not uh, appropriate to use equitable value in that case? Because, uh, you know, it's a transition between the two identified parties. And uh, uh, when we go to the uh, fair value, then we see from the perspective of market participants. So when the, the buyer and seller is both identified, so is it not appropriate to use equitable 
valuable value. Yeah, because we have to comply with the regulations which are prescribed by SEBI, the regulator. Therefore, there even the word value is not there. The word which has been used repeatedly by the SEBI is pricing. Private. It's talking about private. Private arrangement for the public limited company, okay. listed okay. entities. And now see market approach. <laughs> where she mentions that I found this method most appropriate. Fair value hierarchy has been adopted. So this this is this is something where where some challenge has happened and perhaps this slide has come from some earlier valuation report. Yes, yes. 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 So that means the learning for us is that whenever we are, then we must be very careful. <laughs> You must like be very like careful. Purpose is a bit different. Why it is hierarchical? Oh, yes. Except yes. point of view. Yes. My, my point of view is not, uh, not try to use PPT. Word is a more professional and proper document. Legal document. And whatever we want to mention, we mention clearly and briskly, nicely. We should do. It is not used for. Yeah. Uh, now ultimate yes. Now ultimate analysis valuation, and then this ultimate analysis again. The provisions are mentioned. One sixty four, one sixty six. Price determined under valuation report from independent registered valuer. EV oblig evitida, and then average price, and then price determined in accordance with provisions of article of association not applicable, and flow. Price of the equity shares higher of the above. Article of association you will find whenever any venture fund will enter. So then he will insist that you amend the articles and mention in the article either that the agreement will prevail or amend your articles and mention that whenever I will be exiting, then what formula will be used. So then this get invoked in that case. So why the word floor price of the equity share these specific relevance? 164 regulations. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Statement of limiting conditions and then the beautiful annexers because without annexers, this is nothing. And then volume weighted average, how to calculate this volume weighted average. Then with this annexer, one can learn the art number of trading days and then use the Yes. But regulations say that you have to wherever. No, no, no. There are more. more. Yeah. She has, she has, she must have mentioned that NSC has been selected because it is like this. Yeah. And now see comparable company method and what has been used EV oblique habitida. Yes, she has. She has given. These are all annexes. And then see valuation as per continues price oblique book value multiple. We use these as a validation tool also. Then whenever next time I will be here with the permission of these two, <laughs> then I will tell you how to use the valuation tools. Validation tools. <laughs> yes. And see here the valuation, beautiful valuation report ends. Yes, and no Mike is handed over to the president now. <laughs> yes, sir. Uh, it is. Uh, thank you, sir. Okay, first of all, okay, accepting the, our uh, very short notice okay, and taking to us from uh, like a peer review how it is going to be like. We are all young valuers and also our association also like uh, young uh, bank developer association compared to myvaluation.com. Even I have seen that four years back on the myvaluation.com yes. when I was... Uh, writing that examinations so, okay we need your uh, uh, expert and also like what you said like uh, contributing to the society like you started contributing okay, in so many years uh, through myvaluation.com even we have downloaded few valuation reports also it is um, uh, very uh, thankful from bangalore valor association for accepting uh, taking this session uh, on peer review and as well as a lot of information given in merger and uh, merger amalgamations uh, report it is good for us okay and also we again from bangalore valor association said uh, i would like to uh, request to become honorary member for our bangalore valor association it's very much uh, good for us as a bangalore and we can say that okay Ajay Garji is our uh, member of Bangalore Valor Association. Thank you. Thank you very much. And also I thank Rajeshwar Rao, okay, to give in, okay, like uh, connect Ajay Garji to take session. B. <laughs> and it helps us, okay, like, you know, we are, we are probably technically glitched. <laughs> and also, yes. And 
and i have brought something for bangalore valuer assist give sir what is the hidden meaning of learning this is my fourth book social initiative which i got copy one of the copy i have brought it is for youngsters primarily wherever i am invited as a speaker or chief guest or guest of honor in the colleges and institutions there i find few and few youngsters who have fire in their eyes and then i give the complimentary right. coffee to right. them thank you so that is for the year rather rather all of you can join for yes, this yes, memorable yes. photograph yes, yes, yes. so we'll take one minute we'll present momento and we'll chat yes. we already started lot of us sir yes sir <laughs> yes. the business we already started the no, no one i request ajay sir to uh, present momento to uh, ajay sir ji and chatur shankar you can i am as to aap bhi shareator the dekho members who participated through zoom and we will conclude this session now thank you very much